Hey everyone, Wandabot here, and welcome back to the Steam Monster Summer Sale Day 6. It's June 16th, and we've got a lot of games to get through as usual. Just as the usual reminder, don't get a game unless it's on a Daily Deal, Flash Deal, or Steam Monster Sale Deal. Because otherwise, it's probably going to go on one of those at some point, and, uh, well, if it doesn't, you can always buy it during the, the Encore Sale at the very, very end. So... Let's get started. First and foremost is Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous is a space sim. You you uh, buy a spaceship, you fly around, you do missions, you collect bounties, you mine resources. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't played too much of the game yet. I've got a lot of friends that uh, do play it heck of a lot, and they really like it. That said, a lot of the reviews that I've seen, and I would personally agree with it just by nature of it being early access, is the fact that, you know, the game's a little bit empty and a little bit repetitive. So, even though it's, uh, well, I, I guess mainly the other reason why I'd say is, you know, wait on this one, is it's $45 to 25% off. Price will absolutely go lower by either Christmas or next year, and by then they will have more content in the game too. So if you want to get into Elite Dangerous and you've really been waiting for a good sale, this is probably the best sale you're going to see for quite a couple of months. That said... Uh, ultimately, if you're not that interested in the game, or if you've got a limited budget, Elite Dangerous is ultimately waitable. Same thing with Talos Principle. Uh, well, okay, so, you know, as far as the waiting goes. So Talos Principle is a puzzle game. It's got it's kind of some interesting, uh, interesting motif, story, uh, telling mechanics and whatnot, and I have no idea what, uh, the cat has to do with anything, but it's a damn good game. Uh, but with the price tag of $13.60 at 66% off, chances are the price is going to go lower. It's made by Crow Team, the people that made Series Sam, and their games get pretty cheap after a fairly short period of time. So unless you're really passionate about Talos Principle, I'd say it's ultimately uh, waitable. That said, if you're looking for a good puzzle game, uh, this one's actually pretty high up there. Okay, next up is uh, WWE 2015. Uh, which includes all the DLC, so you don't have to worry about season pack or anything, uh, season pass or anything like that, which is admittedly appreciable. That said, uh, it actually came out, you know, a couple, uh, just a little bit over a month ago. So I guess if you're really passionate about a fairly cheap wrestling game, that's it. That said, this is a console re-release, I believe, and uh, I don't know, at a price tag of twenty-five dollars, I'd say it's it's a fine thing to wait for, especially if you're not that into wrestling games. In fact, if you're not really into wrestling games, I'd say ultimately wait. It's not a bad title, but, uh, you know, it's just probably not your thing. Okay, next up is Sleeping Dogs, one of the best deals of the day. And this is the Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition. I don't know if the original edition is still available on the game. Uh, not on the game, on Steam. But that said, I would recommend picking up the Definitive Edition anyway. You, I pretty much bought the original Sleeping Dogs plus Season Pass for, what, 10 bucks. So $750 for the Definitive Edition is not a bad deal. That said, there is no there's no discount for people that already have the game. So if you if you bought it a while ago and you wanted to get the Definitive Edition, there is no upgrade and you're kind of stuck with it. That said, uh, I highly recommend it. It's got you know all of the deta de details, all of the be words are hard sometimes. Okay, it's got all the DLC bundled in, and it's got some HD textures thrown in as well. I don't know, it's a slightly better visual enhancement along the way, but mainly this is just the Game of the Year edition. So, why do I recommend this game? It plays like Grand Theft Auto, but it's uh, it's got a really, really good story. It's got really good melee gameplay. You're effectively playing as a martial artist, cop, undercover, investigating the Triad clans, which are effectively, you know, a group of gangsters in the... Uh, in the Hong Kong area, I think it's Hong Kong. It's it's very well done. The gameplay is solid. The story is great. And there's a lot to be done in the game. And you know what? Uh, the the overall driving and game and you know just basic game mechanics are a, a lot of fun to work with. So even though it's seven fifty uh, seven dollars and fifty cents, you know a little bit steeper than my usual like deal of the day. You know best deal there. I would highly I would highly recommend Sleeping Dogs if you've not played it yet, and would consider it probably the best deal of today. Okay, moving on, we've got the Final Fantasy Franchise Sale, which, I mean, you look at it, and it's like 30% to 50% off, which isn't the greatest of sales, but you have to take into account that uh, Square Enix has actually put these uh, put their games up re-release for fairly cheap, so you can buy, you know, Final Fantasy 13, which is comically long, almost excessively so, for $16, $16 base price, 
down to eight. Or if you want to get 13 two, it's 10 bucks on sale. Uh, eight and seven are currently six. That said, if you uh, if you're willing to wait, Final Fantasy VII is actually getting a remake. They just just announced this on E3. So unless you're really interested in uh, playing kind of the retro style Final Fantasy VII, chances are the remake is going to be fairly good. I don't know if it's going to be truly true to form, but uh, if, unless you're like really passionate about the Final Fantasy games and owning the original Final Fantasy VII, I'd say wait on that one just because you're probably going to be going through the exact same thing twice. And then you also have uh, things like Final Fantasy for the After Years, which I would highly recommend nobody play. It's a terrible port, bad performance, and they cut a lot of content from it. So it's just downright not not recommended in the slightest. Whereas uh, Final Fantasy 4 and 3, the kind of re the PC releases of, I want to say the 3DS games, are actually worth picking up as well. So if you like JRPGs, you really cannot go wrong with any of these games. They're all at fairly decent prices, and I don't foresee them going much cheaper than this. Just because Square Enix apparently has some kind of weird uh, reservation against 75% off. Either way, moving on, we've got The Crew. It's a car racing pseudo MMO. It's not a bad game, but I don't recommend it that much. I tried playing it a little bit, and it's like, all right, this is kind of fun. So if you like really, really realistic driving simulators, The Crew ain't a, is not a bad idea to pick up. That said, with a price tag of $30 at 50% off, you can definitely get a better deal than this. So I recommend waiting. It's also you play, and I don't really like you play. That also has a fairly big influencing, uh, I guess, factor in the in the decision making process here. Okay, moving on. Space Engineers price tag of twelve dollars and fifty cents, fifty percent off. This really isn't that much of a deal. It goes on sale for this price very frequently, and they also have free weekends. So, if you haven't seen or played Space Engineers yet, I'd actually recommend waiting for one of those. They tend to do a free weekend sometime around a major patch. And usually, I think I got the price, the game for 10 bucks, so you might as well wait for this one just in case, because ultimately, uh, it's going to be on sale fairly soon. That said, if you've had your eye on Space Engineers for a while, this is not a bad price tag, so I'd, it's still worth going for. It's just a matter of like whether or not you've played the game or you're you know passively interested in it. Okay, next up, Payday 2. At five bucks, this is the cheapest it has ever been. However, I do not recommend getting it here. Over at the Humble Bundle website, they've got the E3 digital ticket pack, where you can get Payday 2 for like maybe 50 more cents, but is comboed with a bunch of other games, a couple of like uh, DLCs here and there, and especially for Payday 2, four new masks that are only available through this bundle. So I recommend get going over there and picking it up instead. The game is a cooperative shooter, cooperative heist simulator. So if you've ever played, uh, I, I guess if you've been playing Grand Theft Auto V and you're like, man, these heists are fun. Payday 2 is, in my opinion, a better version of, you know, heisting and stuff like that. So I'd highly recommend uh, picking this game up. Just go pick it up over at the Humble Bundle site, especially if you've got friends to play with. This game is a blast to play with a group of people. I guess the one deal worthwhile is if you're uh, if you want to get a four pack, it's fifteen bucks on Steam, whereas you don't have a four four pack for the humble bundle. So there is that, but still. Okay, next up is Life is Feudal, with a price tag of twenty bucks and uh, fairly mixed reviews. I would highly recommend avoiding this game. It's another open world sandbox me medieval simulator game, much like oh shoot, Reign of Kings, but. Uh, 50% off 20 bucks. It's just not worth it. The audience has moved on to Ark, and chances are they'll move on to something else fairly soon. So, unless you're really, really passionate about Life is Futile, skip it. At least until they come out with a good reason to play it again. Okay, next up is Terraria. Which, this is not the lowest price it has ever been. I think it was a dollar a couple years ago. That said, if you want to get into Terraria, now is the time. The price probably will not actually go back down for quite a while. It used to be sold for a dollar back when the developer thought he was done with the game. Um, then he decided to change his mind, release patch 1.1, and uh, like triple the content in the game overnight. It was pretty ridiculous. And they've got a very big patch coming in uh, a week and a half, two weeks, give or take. This game is massive. It A lot of people compare it to... Uh, 2D Minecraft, but I think that's a disservice to both games. This game is a lot more about, like, 
adventure gearing up and then taking out like enemies and bosses and stuff whereas minecraft is much more about like building and resource gathering uh so in this game one of my favorite aspects about it is you can get like accessories so you can get like a, a ninja gear so you can actually wall jump and slide down walls and stuff it's got like rope for repelling it's got uh oh, one of my favorite armor sets is the meteor armor set which when comboed with a, a pistol that you can make has unlimited ammo and uh, is actually a fairly good suit of armor. So overall, I highly recommend Terraria, especially if you have a group of friends to play with. The four pack is $7.50 or the you know single edition is $2.50, though if you're going to be playing it solo, it's not going to be as fun. I, I truly recommend playing this one with friends. And you're going to be playing it for quite a while. Most people that I talk to that really like this game end up having like, you know, hundreds of hours into it. So there's that. Okay, next up, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator X. I have no real bearing on this game. However, at 80% off, this is the cheapest it's ever been. So if you're interested in flight simulators, it's not a bad thing to look into. Okay, next up is the Total War franchise. I actually, I'm just gonna pass on giving my opinion here. The sales aren't that great, and I've never played a Total War game, so I'd rather not... Uh, uh, give a bad opinion here. Uh, that said, if you're interested in the games, might be worth some research. Next up is Grav. One of my... Uh, man, I both love and hate Grav. The visuals, the planet design, it's all actually very pretty, and I'd love to get back to the game at some point. Unfortunately, th the extent of what Grav was in the beginning was a really laggy, non-functional product, and they've largely fixed that now, which is good. So if you wanted to get into Grav, now is not a bad time. Uh, the game is 10 bucks right now, or if you want to get the 4-pack, it's $60. i am not sure why they don't have that on sale, but... Uh, well, whatever. Okay, but they're consistently updating this game. In fact, the last patch was yesterday. So there's, uh, there's a lot of new content practically once a month, once every other month, something in there. And it's, uh, if you don't, if you haven't heard of this one, it's another open-world sandbox game. It didn't release to the same level of, like, uh... Uh, fanatical popularity that, say, Ark did, or, uh, you know, medi medieval life, no, uh, f life is futile, whatever. Uh, and unfortunately, it was, you know, riddled with bugs that I was kind of talking about. That said, it's not a bad game. It's a little bit frustrating, and I am kind of waiting to get back to it, but this might not be a bad time. Unfortunately, the combat's a little bit junky, and the building is a little bit expensive. You do spend a lot of time gathering resources just to be able to build, like, one thing. But, that said, if you liked Rust, Grav is not a bad choice. It's got vehicles, it's got a lot of cool things, it's got a wingsuit of all things, which is awesome. Um, but if you don't if you don't like games like Rust, you're probably not going to like Grav. But, you know, price tag, 10 bucks, not a bad choice if you're into that sort of thing. Okay, I'm going to skip Verdun, I'm going to sk skip Assetto Corsa, I don't know, racing games, and Verdun, I think it's a, oh, classic, it's like a World War One FPS. I don't know. Okay, on to the flash sales. Let's uh, let's pick up the pace a little bit here. Spelunky, it's a roguelike. It's a pretty classic platformer, very popular amongst the uh, streaming roguelike crowd. And uh, at 80% off, $3, I think this is the cheapest I've ever seen it. And if you're interested in Spelunky in any way, shape, or form, now is a great time to pick it up. Uh, it's, it's a platformer, it's fairly merciless. You die, you have to start over from the beginning. It's got a daily run system, and overall, it's a very, very polished product. Um, they do update it very infrequently. I think there is an online co-op mod for it now, but it doesn't work that great. So, I don't know, take that as you will. Okay, next up is the Deus Ex franchise, which does include the uh, the most recent, you know, Deus Ex Human Revolution. So with the announcement of the, uh, the sequel coming out, it might not actually be a bad idea to look into picking this game up. That said, I would, uh, I would actually argue for getting the Deus Ex collect uh, Collection, at six dollars and sixty cents, eighty percent off. It's only a uh, buck fifty more than just buying Deus Ex: Human Revolution by itself, and you get to get pick up the classic games to play. They're a little bit dated graphically, but they're a little bit deeper games. Um, and it also comes with uh, well, okay, no, that's the original one. Invisible War and The Fall are pretty bad, but if you're really interested in the Deus Ex uh, story, they're not bad games to pick up. They're, they're just comparatively bad games. I don't know. Uh, ultimately, I'm, I guess I'd just recommend picking up Human Revolution 
as well as the original Deus Ex Game of the Year edition. There are graphical mods that make the game look a lot nicer, so if you do not like, uh, you know, graphics from the 90s, you can you can definitely get, you know, them enhanced. In the same boat, System Shock 2, which does have multiplayer, but it's a little bit limited on functionality. But it's a, it's a game from 1999, and is actually kind of the predecessor to Bioshock. So if you really liked Bioshock, System Shock 2 is not a... Uh, is not a bad deal. That said, it is clunky, it's a little bit old, but there are graphics and gameplay mods to make the game look a heck of a lot nicer. So, if you're interested in, you know, kind of the atmosphere, core, tension type games with a fairly deep story and RPG mechanics, System Shock 2 is actually one of the better games on the market. And with a price tag of $1, you cannot go wrong. Okay, I'm skipping Morheim, I'm skipping Distance, uh, Contagion's fairly cheap if you like zombie survival games, but it's 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 okay. I don't know. I've not played enough of the game, but it kind of plays like Left 4 Dead. You're supposed to you know hold up, collect weapons, yada yada yada. It's uh, actually not a bad game uh, comparatively. I'm just uh, there are there are better zombie survival games out on the market, hence why I'm mostly disinterested. Okay, next up is Sins of a Solar Rebellion, which is a real time strategy game. Uh, set in space, if you play like 4X strategy games, Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion plays like a real-time version of, you know, uh, Civilization, Galactic Civilizations, whatever. The game is very slow, very methodical, and it's kind of one of those where you send your army to a planet and then you forget about it for a while because they kind of fight for themselves. It's actually kind of nice. Uh, so if you look into Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion, uh, there's like... The Sins of a Solar Empire Trinity and like a couple other things. All you need to play this game is Rebellion. So just, just pick this game up and you're good to go. Because uh, it's a standalone expansion that contains everything else prior to it. So it's absolutely worth picking up. It also has a couple more DLC attached. Uh, so Stellar Phenomena and Forbidden Worlds are probably worth picking up if you're really into interest in this game. It's also multiplayer, so if you want to play with friends, there is a four-pack available for 30 bucks. I've never seen this game get cheaper than this, so if you're interested in Sins of a Solar Empire, or if you've never heard of it and you like forex strategy games or real-time strategy games, uh, Rebellion is absolutely worth picking up. It's one of my favorite games to play. The games are incredibly long, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Okay, next up is the Street Fighter franchise, which, uh, not very cheap, but if you're interested in getting into the Street Fighter games, this is not a bad starting point. I guess my point would be, I've seen Street Fighter 4 go as low as $5 before, I believe, and so I'd say this is ultimately probably skippable. I also have no idea what the difference is between Street Fighter 4, Arcade Edition, and Street Fighter 4, so I, I truly do not know. Uh, if you want to say in comment in the comments... What the difference is, I would be very grateful. Okay, moving on. Another fighting game, Skullgirls, at $2.25, 85% off. This is the cheapest I've ever seen it. And if you really like fairly deep uh, fighting games, Skullgirls is absolutely worth picking up. It's uh, it's It's got some really nice combat, really, really deep blocking and attacking system. Unfortunately, I don't like it that much just because I don't like fighting games, but the art style is good, the music is great. So I'd recommend it if you like fighting games. Just be warned, it might take a little bit of getting used to. The control scheme is different. Okay, Grow Home at $4, 50% off. It's not the greatest deal just in terms of percentages. That said, this game is absolutely worth picking up. I got about, I want to say about four hours out of the game, maybe five, but it's actually some of the most fun I've had in a while from an indie game. It's made by Ubisoft, but it does not require the Uplay client to play, which is incredibly uh, nice, but the entire premise is, you're a, ro you're a robot going around tr just trying to grow a tree thing. Gameplay is very similar. Uh, similar. The gameplay is very simple, um, but, you know, there, there's something kind of nice and relaxing about flying around as a little robot with a, a leaf hang glider for a couple hours looking for collectibles. Uh, if you're not looking for the collectibles, the gameplay is a lot shorter, but uh, I, I personally recommend going for 100% just because you get to unlock some extra power-ups. And they do actually update the game every once in a while. Very uh, no, I think they're I think they're done updating the game. The last one was in uh, March. Oh, actually, I I missed that update. Might actually have to go back and play it then. Okay, but uh, that said, four dollars. It's absolutely worth picking up. It's a very pretty game and it's very fun to play. Okay, next up is the 
uh, Dungeons and Dragons Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition. So if you've never heard of Baldur's Gate, these are the uh, these are the classic RPGs that effectively created the genre. Baldur's Gate 1 was the main one. Unfortunately, Baldur's Gate 1 is not on as good of a sale. Uh, and if you're looking to get into Baldur's Gate at all, uh, the Enhanced Editions are a good place to start. They're, you know, they brought the game to modern resolutions, modern functionality. Unfortunately, I would not recommend picking up Baldur's Gate 2 without Baldur's Gate 1. They have a continuous story. In fact, Baldur's Gate 2 pretty much picks up where Baldur's Gate 1 left off. Eh, there's a time skip. But uh, you're going to be very confused if you go for, if you go from 2 then to 1. So unfortunately, you know, Baldur's Gate 1 not being as much of on as much of a sale, it's going to run you a little bit more. You can probably get a better deal eventually. Um, that said, there's also the Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition, which is uh, standalone, and uh, you don't have to worry about continuity. So might actually be worth picking that one up instead. It's a little bit less story-focused and a little bit more dungeon-focused, and it's a little bit harder, but it's not a bad game in and of its own right. Okay. Uh, let's see, Need for Speed franchise, do not play racing games, don't have much of a opinion on them. Same thing with Burnout Paradise. Robo Robot Roller Derby Disco Dodgeball, uh, $5.09, 66% off. It's the historic low for the game, and I truly recommend this one. It's a complete labor of love from one dude who effectively released the game on Steam Early Access. Uh, actually, not even on Steam Early Access. Uh, he, at first he, you know, kind of released it regularly, then he got it on Steam Early Access to an incredible meh from the, you know, overall market. Steam would not feature his game in any way, shape, or form, they wouldn't even respond to him. Uh, but you know what, he stuck it through, and this is actually one of the games that I point to, if I ever point to games that are, you know, like, have gone through the Early Access process in a very positive way. This game effectively had a massive turnaround. It's actually, I want to say, one of the highest-reviewed games on Steam at this current point in time. Uh, effectively, the game is a first-person shooter. Dodgeball simulator. You play as robots on wheels, and there's some actually really interesting deep mechanics, uh, including, you know, ball catching, uh, sprinting, sliding, all sorts of things. And it's, uh, I believe it's got the the narrator from Quake, you know, the guy that, did, you know, does the multi-kill uh, you know, sound effect, I guess, commentary. So it's actually really, really fun to play the game, really fun to listen to, and truly, if you want to support indie developers in any way, shape, or form, this actually would be the poster child for, like, indie, indie developers to support. Because he's still updating the game, too. Like, he just added uh, new arcade perks, as well as, like, new game modes and stuff over the course of the past week, actually. Wow. Yeah, this, this, this is... Not the best deal of the day, but probably one of my favorite games to go on sale today. Okay, next up is the Substance Indie Pack. I just say skip it because it's 200 freaking dollars, and it looks to be a, uh, oh, it's a, it's a game development software thing. That is not a good deal. Oh, well, uh, let's see, Transocean, don't know about, not going to talk about it. To the Moon, it is effectively an RPG maker game, but it's got, uh, it's got a really nice story, it's really endearing. A lot of people highly recommend it. I personally would too, especially at a price tag of $1.50. I'd also probably recommend picking up the soundtrack additionally just because it's an extra 30 and the game is, you know, that good. Uh, let's see. I, I, I'd like to talk about it, but I also do not want to st spoil the story that much. But uh, suffice to say, I've never heard anybody say anything bad about it. So there's that. Okay, next up is Mini Metro. Skipping that, don't even know uh, what that game is. Anti Chamber. Anti Chamber is. I mean, if you liked Portal, you're gonna like Anti Chamber. That's about the easiest point I can make here. Uh, that said, with a price tag of two bucks, ninety percent off, it's an absolute steal. Probably the one of the best deals out there today. So I highly recommend picking this one up. Uh, it, it's a bit psychedelic, a little bit hard on the eyes, but uh, if you want really good deep puzzles on a first-person perspective. Antichamber is the way to go. Okay, next up is Mafia 2. Have not played it. Uh, looks kind of like a Grand Theft Auto-like. It's got very good reviews, so if you're interested in that sort of thing, might be worth taking a look at. Next is Typing the Dead Overkill at 679, 66% off. It is actually, uh, it's not the lowest I've ever seen it, so I'd probably say wait, because I've seen better sales, especially considering there's DLC to go along with it. 
That said, uh, the DLC pack is actually a fairly decent deal. At $8.50, uh, you can get pretty much the entirety of Typing the Dead Overkill. What is Typing the Dead Overkill? Well, uh, Typing the Dead was a... An, well, House of the Dead was an arcade game. Where, uh, one of those light gun shooters where you shot zombies. Then they decided to release Typing the Dead, which is you have to type out various words on the screen to shoot zombies that are coming at you. Actually works fairly well, and it's kind of a unique concept. Then House of the Dead Overkill was kind of a remake for the Wii that was super campy and kind of stupid. Then they then they uh, released it on the PC, and then they did Typing the Dead Overkill on PC. It is kind of a weird labor of love. The plot for the game is complete garbage, uh, but overall the gameplay is funny, super campy to the point of it's being incredibly stupid, and, uh, well, some of those DLC packs are great, such as, you know, Shakespeare to just downright filth. Which I'm kind of, I would probably say the filth one's probably the the best option. Just because of, uh, I, I, I mean, look, you gotta be immature sometimes. But uh, the game is also co-op, so if you want to play multiplayer with somebody, you totally can. Okay, next is Magic 2015. I do not recommend this game, uh, unless they release some kind of Game of the Year edition, which they don't. So, I don't know, it feels like every single time they release a Magic uh, a, an annual Magic game, it just gets worse. So, would not recommend this unless you're really passionate about the Magic the Gathering games. You can unlock the card, like, various cards through gameplay, uh, but for the most part, they're trying to sell them to you, so they make it kind of hard. Which is dumb, because this is not an MMO, there's no reason why it should be, you know, forcing you to go through a cash shop s system just to get your cards. I do not recommend it. And if you want to get all of the card collections, it's an extra 41 bucks, which is ridiculous and stupid. Okay, moving on. Uh, Sanctum 2. It's a first-person shooter tower defense game. If you really like either of those things, or if you've played Sanctum 1, I highly recommend Sanctum 2. It is an absolute blast. It's uh, 3 bucks for Sanctum 2, 9 bucks for a 4-pack, or if you want to get the complete pack, Sanctum 1, 2, and all the DLC, uh, it's 6 bucks. So I'd probably recommend going with the complete pack just because it does give you a whole heck... Uh, a bunch of extra... Uh, maps along the way. Actually, in retrospect, no, it doesn't actually in include the original game. Well, it's kind of a shame. However, Sanctum 1 itself is two bucks, which is not a bad price tag either. Okay. Oh, moving on. Ironcast is, I believe it's the roguelike, right? Yes. Okay, so it's kind of a roguelike bejeweled game. It doesn't quite work like bejeweled, but it's, it's a roguelike mech fighter, and it uses kind of a connect, sort of connect three mechanics uh, to proceed. It's not actually a bad game at all. Uh, I have not, I didn't get the chance to play it because the developers ultimately ignored me. Uh, but if you like roguelikes, if you like FTL, this might not be a bad thing to look into. So I'd, I'd probably recommend it. But uh, with the price tag of 750, 50% off, it's fairly new. It'll go cheaper probably by Christmas. Okay, Alan Wake, uh, six bucks, 80% off. Not a bad price tag. Uh, it's one of the better atmospheric survival horror type games um and pretty much nobody really knows what this game is going into it and then they then they play it and it's just like oh that's what alan wake is it's a very high quality game especially for its general age i'm not entirely sure when it came out it came out a while ago oh 2012 not so bad then but i personally recommend it it's got a really good uh really good story and it's just it's got the ambiance the environment and you know, everything is a very, very well done complete package. Okay, next up, Driver San Francisco at 75% off, $5, not a bad price tag, and uh, it's probably worth picking up. It's, uh, I, I really do not have a whole lot of words to kind of describe this game apart from like, it's a racing game, but it's got, it's got a nice story to go with it. Uh, and it's, I don't know, it's, it's a weird game. I, if you like realistic racing games... Driver San Francisco is probably worth picking up. Okay, uh, next is Dino D-Day. Price tag of 50 cents, 95% off. Absolutely worth picking up if you like stupid games to play with friends. One team plays as dinosaurs, usually with guns attached. And the other team plays as, uh, well, humans, which is less interesting. Uh, it's, it's one of those kind of campy, you know, team-based shooters. You're probably going to have a fair amount of fun as a result of this game. Not too much, but... It's enough for the price tag to absolutely be worth it. Especially if you like just campy, campy, stupid games. Okay. Uh, Real Mist, Masterpiece Edition. If you've ever played Mist, or if you've never played Mist, 
This is the only version I'd highly I'd recommend picking up. They've remastered this game to hell and back, and I think at this point they should be done. Please be done. Please stop releasing new versions of this game. This is like the fourth remaster. Uh, that said, this is like the HD version, runs on all modern machines, has good controls, yet, uh, and so on and so forth. So, if you want to get into Myst, or if you liked the original Myst and you've been looking for a good modern copy, Real Myst Masterpiece, Real Myst Masterpiece Edition is the one to pick up. Okay, Sony Movie Studio and Take On... Oh, what is Take On Mars? I don't know. I've never looked into this one. Uh, that said, with a 33% off, it's ultimately skippable. Oh, it looks like a uh, space simulator stuff. I don't know. Uh, price tag at twelve oh five. Unless you're really interested in like uh, space sims, skip it for now. Uh, Lords of Zulima is a it's like a turn-based RPG tactical game. I haven't heard too much about it. Uh, the art style never really appealed to me. So uh, anybody that's interested in this game probably knows more than I do. But again, price tag of ten bucks. It's not a bad deal. It'll go cheaper. It does have good reviews. So if you're if you've heard of it and you're interested in it, it's not a bad price. But I'd ultimately say wait. Okay, next up, Eight Bit Dungeon Two, or Bit Dungeon Two. I've played a little bit of this game. It plays like a mobile game. I think it is a mobile game, which is kind of a shame because I feel like this game could have been a lot better with better controls. You don't actually. I believe you don't actually have like a dedicated attack button, and ultimately the game is kind of confusing. Uh, it's laid out very similarly to Zelda, but it doesn't control like it, so it feels just kind of weird and disconcerting. It's got RPG mechanics too, but with the price tag of uh, $2.50, if you're interested in roguelikes and you liked the original like Zelda games, it's not a bad thing to pick up. They're also still updating the game kind of slowly, uh, so they actually just added local co-op about a month ago. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, this is not a bad game to pick up. It's, uh, it's a good roguelike. I just wish the controls were a little bit uh, more sensible, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, and the very last thing is The Fall, which is a story-based... Uh, I think it's a platformer? It's an action-adventure game. Uh, Puzzle-solving side scroll. I don't know. It's got a nice story, and I don't... I don't know if this is supposed to be, like, episodic or not. I don't remember. They didn't... Uh, the developers ended up passing me over for a copy. But if you like story-driven games, The Fall is actually pretty worthwhile, especially with the price tag of 2 bucks, 80% off. Uh, I'd say it's worth picking up, uh, because that, that, is a damn de that is a damn good deal. Okay, so, quick recap, games that are worth picking up at their current price tags. Uh, let's go top to bottom this time around, just, uh, I guess, because. So, Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition, 750 if you like Grand Theft Auto, or if you like story-based games, or if you like, uh, you know, Melee Brawlers, Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition is absolutely worth picking up. Uh, let's see. The Final Fantasy games, uh, they're all great ports for the most part, except for the After Story or whatever it is called. Uh, but, you know, thir uh, 7, 8, 13, and 13, 2, absolutely worth picking up. I guess 3 and 4 as well. Uh, so if you want to if you want to play the Final Fantasy games, if you've never played the Final Fantasy games, I highly recommend any of them. I'd probably say only get into 13 if you've got a lot of time and you're a little bit more patient. The story's a little bit clunky and the gameplay is a little... Eh, I mean, the game, it's a story... It's a hallway simulator. Still, uh, let's see. Payday 2, if you've got friends to play with or if you just want to play on your own and you kind of like heisting things, Payday 2 is absolutely worth picking up and go pick it up on the Humble Bundle site instead. Terraria, great sandbox game. Uh, if you've... If you like digging, if you like collecting resources, getting weapons, accessories, stuff like that, Terraria is great. It's also got bosses. Don't forget that. Okay, uh, Splunky, great roguelike, great platformer, very hard, very merciless, and uh, I recommend it. I don't like it that much, but I definitely recommend it. Okay, the Deus Ex franchise, absolute steal, probably one of the better deals today. Uh, System Shock 2, same thing. Uh, don't forget for both Deus Ex Original and System Shock 2, you can get HD mods that make the games look way nicer. Uh, let's see, Grow Home, which is stupid fun and highly recommended. It's one of my favorite games from this year that I did a Let's Play on, and uh, that's a fairly good price tag for it as well, at $4. Uh, Sins of the Solar Empire Rebellion, great 4X strategy game, uh, great RTS. It's yeah, it's the midpoint between 4X and RTS. Uh, let's see. Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition, probably rec would recommend waiting unless you're really passionate about the series, just because you do not want to get into Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition without the first game to go with. Okay, 
Disco Dodgeball. If you've got a game, if I had a game to point out that you absolutely should get from today's sale, it is this one. It still has, uh, it still has a fairly large community, very highly reviewed, and the developer is an awesome dude. Uh, let's see, To the Moon at a buck fifty, eighty-five percent off, is uh, very charming, kind of short, but ultimately worth it. Anti Chamber. If you liked Portal, you're gonna like this game, just hands down. And if you haven't played Portal yet, A, go get Portal, but also Antichamber is absolutely worth picking up as well. Typing the Dead Overkill can go cheaper, but the DLC pack is actually fairly cheap. Sanctum 2, great price, especially if you like cooperative first-person tower defenses, of which there are two. This one, and I guess Orcs Must Die, even though that one's third-person. Okay, uh, Dino D-Day, which is just stupid fun and stupid cheap. Bit Dungeon 2, 250, great roguelike for fairly cheap as well. And The Fall, great story, uh, story-based side-scroller for two bucks. So with that, I will see you guys tomorrow for the next day of the Steam Monster Summer Sale. And uh, well, if you liked this video in any way, shape or form, please leave me a like. It helps more than you know. If you have any games that I, if there are any games that I didn't cover, didn't cover well, or you don't really understand my reason for not recommending them, uh, leave a comment below and I can give you a uh, fairly, fairly in-depth opinion. Or if it's a game that I don't know about, like uh, Verdun, uh, feel free to say in the comments why it's actually worth picking up. And I can append it into, you know, a later video or something like that. I don't know. And uh, if you want to see more Steam Summer Sale videos or uh, just videos in general, uh, hit subscribe. Because, well, I'm going to be doing a lot more deal videos along the way. I need to do one for that uh, digital ticket bundle now that I've plugged it here. So, with that, see you guys tomorrow for the next day of the Summer Sale. And as always, thanks for watching.